Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerBoxingNews.com. On Roku, we're in the sports section. Look us up, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. According to some news reports, former heavyweight champion Tommy Morrison has died at the age of 44. Morrison was the heavyweight champion in 1993. He beat Big George Foreman. Now let me just say, you know, we talk about talent. Tommy Morrison, in my opinion, was one of the more talented heavyweights that I've seen. He was a guy really made to be heavyweight champion. He had a big personality. Quite frankly, I thought he stole, I believe it was Rocky V, from Sylvester Stallone. He was eloquent. He um, had a natural charisma about him. When you see that Rocky movie, you're going to see that he easily could have been an actor, right? The guy was um, a celebrity. And, of course, he also sported an 80% knockout ratio. He had very fast hands. He could throw them in combination, right? And when he wanted, he could move. That fight against George Foreman, he actually won that fight by several rounds. His movement was just too great for George Foreman. Let me uh, also just add that Tommy Morrison never lost a fight that went the distance, right? His problem, quite frankly, was that while he had the physical gifts to move around the ring and be dominant, he was too much of a fighter. So in three fights, he decided to stand and trade, and they backfired on him, right? The uh, Ray Mercer fight. How do you lose to Ray Mercer? You try to out-punch him. Bad strategy, Tommy. Tommy also thought he could do that to a fighter named Lennox Lewis. This was the Lewis of the mid-1990s. Let's just say it didn't work out well for him. Also, Tommy lost his title to a fighter named Michael Bant, who, quite frankly, was much better than advertised, right? So understand, Tommy had the skills. Had he just appreciated the part of the sport where you hit and don't get hit back, I believe he might have risen to even higher heights. Let me also say, too, one of the best fights I ever saw in my life and it might be up on YouTube, it was Tommy Morrison against Donovan Razor Ruddick from the mid-1990s. That's a barn burner. In that fight, you're going to see everything that's great with Tommy Morrison. He won the fight by KO. But you're also going to see what was wrong with Tommy Morrison. He's on the canvas in that fight, right? In other words, Morrison was a guy who, even with a big one-handed puncher, like Razor Ruddick, insisted on tempting fate, trading with Razor Ruddick. Keep in mind, Ruddick was one-handed, and Tommy still got caught with that one hand. Very entertaining fighter. I thought he was, at times, a great fighter. Um, unfortunately, Tommy's no longer with us at 44. Let me go one step further, because I think that it deserves mention. Tommy Morrison was one of the first big fighters, right? You know, world-class fighters, guy, uh, you know, vying for the belt in his division uh, to actually admit to steroid use, right? Now, people need to realize that the world was different in the 80s and 90s. I know old-timers right now are nodding their heads. Today, we're acting like we're surprised to learn that there are performance-enhancing drugs in the sport of boxing. Right? Understand, back then, 
contrary to folklore today, you knew many fighters were juicing. There just wasn't the proof, right? The failed drug tests. And of course, good luck getting a fighter tested back then, right? You have fighters today who are able to fight in title fights and not get tested, right? Back then, the idea of testing a fighter was absurd. But yet you knew something was wrong. Because if you watched boxing over the years, if you looked at the physiques of the fighters, you knew that something was going on when almost every heavyweight in the early 1990s, and I say almost every heavyweight because you did have many who didn't look like they were weightlifters. Big George Foreman never looked like he was a weightlifter after he returned. But several fighters did. And you were wondering how they did it, especially when, you know, the physiques had little to no body fat on them. Also, you had fighters who were injured or who were incarcerated, who then got out of jail or, you know, got out of the hospital and then suddenly were just too ripped. Let me also point out, too, that you understood Athletes across the board were juicing because when you looked at baseball, the numbers started to get inflated around that time. Understand, you had guys who were okay amateurs who suddenly showed up in the pros with layers of muscle. If you go back, as I like to say, and look at that 1988 baseball game, World Series game, where Kirk Gibson hits the home run and gives the Dodgers the win over the Oakland A's. There is a time in that game when Jose Canseco comes to the plate. I believe it's his last at bat. And the Dodger crowd breaks out with the chant of steroids. Right? It's on tape, folks. That's 88. By then, the fans knew what steroids were and they knew certain superstars we're taking steroids, right? So, fast forward to today. Let's make it relevant to today. When there are disputes between high-profile fighters, whether it's Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, or Timothy Bradley and Juan Manuel Marquez, about the drug testing protocol for a fight, you need to take it seriously. Because understand, steroids have been in the game for a long time. Let me also point out that you have several former NFL football players who admit to having taken steroids back in the day. One of them, I'm not going to name names for legal reasons, but one of them is actually a radio host these days. And he talks about how back in the day, People were so flippant about steroid use that when he took steroids, he literally bought it off the back of a truck. Right now, Tommy Morrison claims he was in a gym, some guy had a needle, and he just went along with the program. Right? He admits to having used steroids. All I'm saying to you is that was rampant back then, whether it was football baseball, or boxing. You're kidding yourself if you believe in a sport where at the elite level guys are getting seven and eight figure paychecks that these athletes don't have an incentive to cut corners to increase performance. Right? Let me also point out that in Tommy Morrison's day steroids were oil based. Right? And let's remember you know, Tommy Morrison admitted to using steroids after Ben Johnson gets thrown out of the 1988 Olympics, right? Gets stripped of his gold medal for using steroids before that 1988 Olympic final. And of course, now we're finding out that certain countries, including Canada, had institutionalized steroid programs. At least some coaches did, right? So... View Tommy Morrison through that lens. He's from a different time. Today, to an old-timer like me, 
the surprise anyone has that professional athletes, some of them at least, might be doing things to enhance their performance through the use of drugs and everyone looks surprised. That's a bit ridiculous to me because drug use has happened in the sport for quite some time. I'm going to challenge YouTube Nation here. Do the research. There's a fighter who came out of prison back then who weighed about 190 pounds or something like that. He fought a few months later and of course the story is that he added something like 20 to 30 pounds of muscle to his frame. Now, if in your everyday life you don't see even the people you know who hit the gym on a regular basis changing their bodies that fast, you should view any occasion like that in the world of sports with suspicion. I know these guys surround themselves with people with titles, right? Um, assistant head trainer, nutritionist, and all this other stuff. But as I said before, you need to view all of that with suspicion. Just look at track and field. Several of the elite track and field superstars of the last few years, including Marion Jones, have now admitted to using performance enhancing drugs. I'm not saying all, but let's just say a sizable enough group where, quite frankly, if you're going to police the sport, you need to consider testing. Also, we even hear now that sports with rigid testing protocols, Tour de France, cycling, have had teams literally work out programs to beat the drug testing protocol. In boxing, we've even had some guys who didn't test positive for anything later say after a fight that yes, I took EPO. Right? I mean, we've even had that. And so Tommy Morrison admitted to taking steroids in the 1990s. And understand, Tommy Morrison beat George Foreman back then. We can't piece together which fights he fought clean and which fights he fought enhanced. Right? Just understand that that is a chapter in boxing's history. No one watching this video in a sport where fighters are curiously gaining weight, right, dominating across different weight classes in a way in which our father's generation and the generations before that were not able to. And in a sport in which fighters are literally 15 to 20 pounds above their weight class and then magically in the course of a week are able to show up at the weigh-in and make weight and then show up the night of the fight 15 to 20 pounds heavier, right? Given that reality, no one should be surprised, quite frankly, that some people are seeking chemical shortcuts in the sport. Let me hear from you. I think it's a... Um, Tough day for boxing. I thought Tommy Morrison had the world on a string at one point and uh, let it get away from him. He's gone much too soon. Thanks for stopping by.